you feel today? So terrible. Because my little boy is in, in Arizona with his father on a visit, and I was just imagining how I would feel if that was my child. As far as everything being a normal work day, it wasn't. Everybody spent their time out gathered together talking about why, how come, why why they did it to Chachilla, you know. Why? Why Chachilla? Because it's being so small. And, I mean, nobody here has money to pay. The kids aren't that important. But you, you kind of figure... This is the CBS Evening News with Walter Cronkite. Good evening. There may never have been as anguishing a mystery. 26 school children and their bus driver have vanished in California's San Joaquin Valley. Vanished without a clue. 19 girls, 7 boys, 6 to 14 years old, gone since yesterday. Only their abandoned bus has been found. Anguished parents, President Ford, FBI Director Clarence Kelly, hundreds of searching police are asking the question, where are the children? Murray Frompson reports from Chowchilla, California. Today was the last day of summer school in this small rural California community. But for the children and their driver, what also should have been the first day of vacation, has all the appearances of a nightmare. A sheriff's spotter plane discovered the bus in which they had been riding, abandoned and camouflaged in a dry creek bed. Police rushed to the scene. They found no ignition key, no sign of bloodshed or violence, only fresh tire tracks in the dirt, but no other clues to what increasingly looks like the most bizarre crime in recent memory. It touched off a widespread search throughout the San Joaquin Valley, a search now being coordinated by the FBI. If it is a massive kidnapping, and that's what law enforcement officers seem to think it is, they have no clues, no idea of what happened or why. Anguished parents and their neighbors, some with citizen band radios, have joined the search. Others are milling about the police station in Chowchilla, mostly bewildered, too shocked to cry, but hopefully awaiting some word that their youngsters have been found. So far, there's been no word from any abductors. And that has led to a wild series of rumors about the motives behind the crime. Was it an outright kidnapping? A psychopath or sex maniac on the loose? Or an act of political terrorism? Authorities are examining every possibility. But the question in this small town this evening is, why here? And for the parents, why my children? Murray Fromson, CBS News, Chowchilla, California.
Those kidnapped Chowchilla, California school children back home safe and sound today had their fingerprints taken by police. The action, part of a police attempt to identify their kidnappers from fingerprints found at the rock quarry and in the hijacked school bus. Murray Fromson reports on that kidnapping's happy ending. The ordeal ended as suddenly and dramatically as it had begun. The children have been found. They are in good shape. The bus driver has been found. He is in good shape. There's no indication of any harm. Uh, law enforcement officers what? have the children at the present time. 26 hours of terror for the children. Then this. The comfort and reassurance of reunion. Mothers and fathers led or carried them in hospital night clothes, past waiting reporters and cameramen. The youngsters were too tired, shocked, or frightened to answer anyone's questions, even from the FBI. One agent pleaded with a child, Come on, Angel, I have to talk to you. Please take your thumb out of your mouth. Clearly for children aged 6 through 14, it had to be a nightmare. Not only terror, but the possibility of death. I think they were going to kill us. How about you? Well, we, I was on a different bus than Becky, and I thought that it was going to kill her and Edward and everybody else that was in a different bus. Well, Edward was in the back of the bus with us. He was in the front with them then. At the time, well, you were quite frightened because you didn't know what they were going to do and they didn't say anything. Did they say anything along the way? Yeah, uh, my bus, the van driver of mine, he, he acted real nice. He kept saying, oh, you guys are right back there and stuff. We had to be wet, wet in our pants. The kidnapped victims were forced into an abandoned truck van buried at a rock quarry in Livermore, California. It was used by their abductors as a makeshift underground prison. And according to the rescued bus driver, Ed Ray, very nearly became their tomb. They had some tomb. food and some water for us, some cherry oats and tater chips and plenty of water, a couple of loaves of bread. We had a lot of crying and begging for their mamas and stuff, but I kept quieting them down to see the guys wouldn't get mad at us. But just lucky we had a short block of wood in the clean there they had for a brace. I'd say about 18 inches long. We used it for pries and busted boards and tried to shake the board where we get the dirt to fall down and come down through our, into our bunks there. We just took time, got the water out, I mean the dirt out, and come down and pour water over our heads and everything else to try to cool off and go back up and dig some more. So I'd say about seven a little about seven o'clock we got dug out late in the afternoon ray and a couple of the older boys dug their way out and lifted the other children to safety the biggest shock for the people of this small farming community is that a kidnap could even occur here maybe in los angeles or san francisco said one puzzle farmer but not in chowchilla life here may never quite be the same as a father of two kidnapped daughters said i'm never going to let them out of my sight again Murray Frumson, CBS News, Chowchilla, California. Chowchilla police say the FBI is looking for three heavily armed men, one of them identified only as Jerry McCune, no description given. The others, an unnamed 36-year-old with black curly hair, a chipped front tooth, and a tattoo on his right forearm. Also, an unnamed 27-year-old with brown hair, blue eyes, and a hairy mole on the right side of his chin. The alert also asked police to look out for two vans, one light-colored with two CB antennas and portholes on the side, and the other of medium green or possibly blue color with white wheels and side windows painted white. California Governor Jerry Brown offered a $10,000 reward for the kidnappers, the maximum under state law, and said the persons responsible must not go unpunished. The search goes on for the kidnappers of those Chowchilla, California school children and bus driver with investigators still confident a break in the case is near. Harold Dow reports. Police continue to guard the area where the tomb-like prison is buried, but behind security lines, the search for evidence continues. Early this afternoon, officials from the Alameda County Sheriff's Department began digging out the buried truck body that served as an underground makeshift prison for the 26 school children and their bus driver. Officials are clearly trying to find anything that will give them clues to aid in the apprehension of those involved in the mass kidnapping. So far, they have been unable to make any positive identification of the three suspects, except for these composite drawings. Computers have now been brought into the investigation. The machines are sifting new clues, license plate numbers, and physical descriptions. 
One theory that the police are working on is that these three men could have been inmates in San Quentin prison and may have plotted the crime while behind bars. A San Quentin informant told authorities he overheard convicts discussing kidnapping some children and keeping them in caves. Law enforcement officials are confident that the investigation is making progress. We feel now that we're getting close. We've had the uh, tremendous cooperation of the state agencies. Uh, we've had tremendous uh, uh, cooperation from all of the law enforcement agencies as far as that goes. We've reached the stage where we hope soon to be centering in on some particular suspects. But officials still refuse to speculate on a motive in this bizarre crime. They have ruled out the possibility that this was an act of political terrorism, leaving ransom or revenge as possible motives. Harold Dow, CBS News, Livermore, California. In Montreal today, the international... Well, there are clues aplenty, but still no break in that Chowchilla, California school bus kidnapping. Richard Threlkel reports on the kidnapped manhunt, now in its fifth day. Today, in this rock quarry, they unearthed the truck that was prison and very nearly a tomb for 26 children and their school bus driver. Unearthing the who and why of all this is much harder. The sheriff's office has some suspects so far unidentified and some clues. They have identified some vans the kidnappers apparently used to carry the children, and they found some things that the kidnappers took from the driver in the hills near San Jose, so maybe the kidnappers are there somewhere. But the sheriff still doesn't really know who nor or why. Once you find someone who has a motive, then you have an idea who committed the crime. In this thing, it's quite unusual in the fact that there was no known or apparent motive, and that may be because the uh, FBI, the local authorities in both counties moved on this thing so rapidly and with so much heat, we, uh, hopefully at least, that we, uh, we, we thwarted their plan somewhat. It may have all started here, San Quentin Prison, that's one theory. An informer said he heard three inmates here last year plotting just such a kidnapping as revenge, they said, against the people of an unnamed little town, perhaps Chowchilla. The sheriff is not discounting the story. There are other mysteries. The kidnappers carefully prepared this hideout, a truck long buried in a quarry with a little food, makeshift toilets, and precious little ventilation. Wire mesh blocked the entrance with earth piled high above it. Then once their victims were inside, the kidnappers began to cut the wire and the earth crashed down from above and bus driver Ed Ray was sure they were all going to die. The top was falling in on us. When they cut them wires up the side, it's just like the wires was all going to come in and smash us to the bottom and that's the end of it. Perhaps the kidnappers meant to kill their victims, but instead, inexplicably, the kidnappers suddenly fled. They never returned and the children dug their way to freedom. So who did it and why? Was it a few hateful Pied Pipers bent on robbing some little California Hamlin of its most precious possession, its children? And for what? to make some political point, to get even with these people, to get money from these people. The sheriff says he doesn't know yet, but he means to find out any way he can. The sheriff's office goes on searching and speculating. Perhaps they'll know the who and why of it tomorrow or next month. Now, there are only questions. Richard Threlkeld, CBS News, San Francisco. And almost turned himself total. into police and the FBI is looking nationwide now for two others in the Chowchilla, California school bus kidnapping. Harold Dow has that story. Richard Schoenfeld was accompanied by his father and an attorney when he turned himself over to the Alameda County DA to answer 43 charges. The charges are for what is aggravated kidnapping and the section is based upon a purpose of either robbery or ransom. So they weren't just doing it for the hell of it. That's the charge. In addition to the 27 counts of kidnapping, Schoenfeld is charged with 16 counts of robbery. The robbery charges because the kidnappers took clothing and other items from the victims as they lowered them into the moving van that was to be their prison. Schoenfeld's father contacted an attorney early in the week when his son's names were mentioned as suspects in the Chowchilla kidnapping. His lawyer said Richard surrendered for his own protection. Well, there was an all points bulletin issued and it was one of those uh, bulletins that said uh, dangerous armed and so on and um, he's only 22 years old he's very young and we thought we'd better turn him in uh, before something uh, could have happened and so that's why we did it neighbors in the san francisco suburb of atherton know schoenfeld and his brother james also a suspect as well-mannered young men they're always very polite and outgoing and if we saw them 
outside. They always chatted with us. Very friendly boys, you know. I never once ever even heard them say a swear word. So they've really been super kids in our eyes. The kids that we know were, I would not consider them dangerous. I'd consider them uh, polite, young, um, energetic boys that um, had a real interest in automobiles. It was the interest in automobiles that was apparently the bond between the Schoenfeld brothers and a third suspect, Fred Woods. Woods' former wife, who shared a small house on his father's estate, remembers him as a violent man. There was a little red caboose on top of this hill that you can see from the road. Mm -hmm. And kids go out on dates and they see this caboose and they get curious. They want to go up and see what's in it and look around. And, uh, it would upset, upset him so much that instead of to asking him to leave that he are on private property, he would shoot over the head with his pistol or his rifle. I feel sorry for him. If, if he did do uh, this crime, if he wasn't involved, I feel like he needs help. Last night, the FBI re-entered the case, joining the search for the last two suspects, 24-year-old James Schoenfeld and 24-year-old Fred Woods, both called armed and dangerous. Harold Dow, CBS News, San Francisco. Good evening. James Schoenfeld and Frederick Woods, the last known suspects in the Chowchilla, California kidnapping case, were both arrested today. The 24-year-old Schoenfeld was arrested near Menlo Park, California. Woods, also 24, was seized in Vancouver, Canada. Harold Dow reports. Frederick Woods was arrested by the Royal Canadian Mounted Police this afternoon, just across the Washington state border in Vancouver. Woods' father owns the quarry where the kidnapped children were held underground. Details of Woods' arrest are sketchy. It came just a few hours after California police picked up the other fugitive in the case. James Schoenfeld was captured at dawn today. Police say he ran hard all over the western United States, but he did not run well, leaving a trail of clues that led to his arrest. As investigators reconstruct it, the day after the kidnapping, Schoenfeld turned up at a trailer he'd rented outside Reno, Nevada. Fingerprints and newspaper stories about the kidnapping were found there. He hit the road, driving nearly a thousand miles in little over a day, trying to get into Canada at a spot on the Idaho border. Turned back by Canadian officials who just didn't like his looks. The next day, he showed up in Spokane, Washington, going to a gun store, selling two rifles, two pistols, and a shotgun, heading north, trying to get into Canada again, turned back again when more guns were found in his car. But he was not arrested because he still hadn't been named as a suspect. On the road again, turning up the next day in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, dumping the old Chrysler he'd been driving, selling two more pistols and some tools, switching to an old van, the same one he was spotted driving early this morning south of San Francisco. Schoenfeld was arrested without a struggle. His lawyer said he'd gotten tired of running anyway, had called and said he'd turn himself in at 8 this morning. Police closed in an hour before that. Just about the time James Schoenfeld was arrested this morning, his brother Richard, who gave himself up six days ago, was taken from the San Francisco area to Chowchilla to face arraignment on 27 counts of kidnapping. Judge Howard Green said he will continue the younger Schoenfeld's bail at $1 million, effectively keeping him behind bars. Richard Schoenfeld spoke only briefly during the short hearing. Lawyers indicated he'll enter a plea of not guilty. Outside the small Chowchilla courtroom, many townspeople gathered, friends and parents of the 26 children kidnapped two weeks ago today. Among the bystanders, Ed Ray, the bus driver, credited with saving the youngsters' lives. It had been a busy morning. Richard Schoenfeld led from the courtroom only hours after his brother's arrest near San Francisco, and Frederick Woods arrested a few moments later in Canada. All three suspects behind bars, leaving the people here with only one question. Why were the children kidnapped? Harold Dow, CBS News, Chowchilla, California. Three weeks ago, people in the small California town of Chowchilla were stunned when 26 of their children and the local school bus driver were kidnapped. Today, the three young men accused of the mass kidnapping returned to Chowchilla. Harold Dow reports on their court appearance. Fred Woods and James and Richard Schoenfeld were heavily guarded when they left their Alameda County jail cells this morning en route to the Chowchilla courthouse. All three suspects have been accused of the bizarre abduction of 26 schoolchildren and their bus driver. In all, they each faced 43 counts of kidnapping and robbery. Security was also extremely tight in the small farming community of Chowchilla. The local sheriff said he was not too concerned about the possibility of a lynching by the townspeople. He termed them hard-working and law-abiding citizens. But he said he was afraid of what he called the Jack Ruby type. 
Inside, the tiny courtroom was jammed with reporters and townspeople. Also attending were some relatives of the kidnapped victims and the bus driver credited with saving the children's lives. The courtroom was quiet. None of the defendants had very much to say. They displayed little emotion. Defense attorneys entered pleas of not guilty for Fred Woods and James Schoenfeld to all counts charged in the indictments. Nevertheless, Judge Howard Green set bail for each defendant at a million dollars. The other suspect, Richard Schoenfeld, who was arraigned last week, was in court this morning to see if he could get his million dollar bail reduced. But Judge Green was not swayed by the defense argument that the younger Schoenfeld had no prior jail record and had surrendered. Reduction of bail was denied because of the seriousness of the charges. When the three suspects came out of the courthouse, many citizens of Chowchilla were waiting. Most were just curious and wanted to get a look at the three men accused of kidnapping the children of this rural community. Harold Dow, CBS News, Chowchilla, California. Roy Thompson, a Canadian-born California town today, a big thank you for a local hero, Ed Ray. Harold Dow reports. This was the scene that night last month when the 26 school children and their bus driver returned to Chowchilla. They had all been victims of an unbelievable kidnapping that ended only when the school bus driver, Ed Ray, helped them escape from their makeshift underground prison. Today, the grateful townspeople honored their hometown hero. More than 4,000 lined the parade route to cheer the red, white, and blue float that carried Ed Ray and the children down the main street of this small farming community. And behind them came the very same school bus that had been hijacked, only now it carried happy parents. The town had put off the celebration until everyone was reasonably sure that only three people were involved in the kidnapping. So today, with the three suspects behind bars, it was time to say thanks to Ed Ray. There were the bands, the tributes, and finally, an old-fashioned barbecue at the fairgrounds. Someday, the townspeople say, this two-ton monument will be moved to a prominent spot in town. It has a bronze plaque telling the whole story and listing the names of those who went through the ordeal. And at the top of the list is the name Ed Ray, the soft-spoken 55-year-old bus driver who brought their children home. Harold Dow, CBS News, Chowchilla, California. And we hope all goes well in your home this week. Good night and have a good night. past the hour. Last July 15th, near Chowchilla, California, three men with guns took over a school bus. The bus driver and 26 children were forced into a truck trailer which had been buried underground earlier. After about 15 hours of digging, they managed to get out. After two weeks, the last of the three kidnapping suspects was arrested. But a look back at Chowchilla shows that what happened then is still on a lot of people's minds. The safe return of the 26 youngsters and their bus driver should have ended the ordeal, especially after the capture of the alleged kidnappers. It did not. Nearly a year after the bizarre crime, the defendants have not yet been brought to trial, and there's little likelihood they will be for many months. In any case that has a lot of notoriety, such as this does, and where you have a number of attorneys, and the attorneys are, are uh, able financially or out of, out of their own interest to continue with the case and make all of the possible motions. It just takes a long time. If they are innocent, fine. Let's get it to trial. If they're guilty, get it to trial. But get it over with. It's too hard to explain to kids why nothing's been done. Many in this small farming community would like visitors to believe the children have recovered from the shock of last year's nightmare. But not everyone agrees, especially the parents. It's going to leave a scar on them. That's, that's no doubt about it. Uh, anybody goes through an incident like they did, well, I can't help but bother them. So uh, uh, it's just going to be a matter of time, I guess, until it wears off, if it ever does. We'll never know, I guess. Chowchilla's population is about 5,000. Strangers are regarded suspiciously. During a summer school excursion, a class including some of the kidnapped victims was taken past a granite rock marker outside the police station. Does anyone know why it's here? With heartfelt thanks, the inscription reads, the people of Chowchilla commemorate the safe return of 26 school children and their bus driver. According to one investigator, many of the victims still suffer nightmares, anxiety, or fear when they see a van, a stranger, or hear unfamiliar voices late at night outside their homes. When you take young people and you bury them underground uh, under circumstances where most of them think they're going to die, it, it's difficult for that not to leave a, a very lengthy uh, psychological kind of a, of a harm. 
we're driving down the road and there happens to be a van, whether it's telephone company or PG&E or just a, a vehicle beside the road. Go on past Mama, don't stop, don't slow down. Nevertheless, the children still travel to and from school on the familiar yellow buses. But for Joan Brown, the days are long and tense. Not until the bus rolls up in late afternoon, she says, and Jennifer comes walking across the road, can she begin to relax. Murray Fromson, CBS News, Chowchilla. We're now coming up on 36 minutes past the hour. A judge in Oakland, California, has begun a court hearing on a famous mass kidnapping, and we have a report from Bernard Goldberg. It happened in July of 1976. A school bus carrying 26 children and their driver stopped by three armed and masked kidnappers on a road in Chowchilla, California. The children and their driver taken some 100 miles where they were imprisoned in a buried moving van. After 16 hours underground, they escaped, having scratched and clawed their way out. Three young men, two brothers and a friend, all in their 20s, were captured and after initially pleading innocent, changed their pleas to guilty of simple kidnapping. But they said they were innocent of a more serious charge, kidnapping with bodily harm, a charge that carries a maximum sentence of life in prison with no chance of parole. The defense contends the injuries allegedly sustained by four children and the driver amounted only to superficial cuts sustained while trying to escape and were not inflicted by the kidnappers to terrorize the victims. The hearing began yesterday in Oakland before a judge. There is no jury. It was not held in Chowchilla because the defense did not think the three could get a fair trial there. Bus driver Ed Ray testified first, saying the children were crying. It was hot and cramped and dark in their underground prison, and that I thought we were all going to die. And Ray said that while trying to escape, he cut two fingers, bleeding for 10 minutes and 15-year-old Mike Marshall, the oldest of the kidnapped children, telling the judge, it was so hot that the children took turns breathing air from a vent hole in the van, and that some children fainted during their 16-hour entombment. The three confessed kidnappers listened silently to the testimony. They almost certainly will face long prison sentences for the simple kidnapping charges to which they pleaded guilty, but they could be paroled after seven years for that charge while they conceivably may never be paroled if found guilty of the kidnapping with bodily harm charges. We're trying to say that under the case law, when somebody can find someone uh, for that period of time in an underground uh, kind of a cavern, under those circumstances, that it does constitute bodily harm without having to get into the emotional effect. No, we're saying if a person attempts to escape and suffers bodily harm, that's not bodily harm uh, within the uh, purview of the code. We're relying upon a case in which uh, an individual jumped out of a moving truck on a freeway and injured himself uh, far more severely than any of the injuries that we know about in this case, and the appellate court held that that did not constitute bodily harm. This hearing may last as long as two weeks, a hearing that will help determine if the kidnappers spend the rest of their lives in prison. Bernard Goldberg, CBS News, Oakland, The 26 California. children and their bus driver were imprisoned in an underground moving van for 16 and a half hours before escaping. Three young men, two brothers and a friend, all in their 20s from wealthy families, were captured. They were planning to ransom their captives for $5 million. The three pleaded guilty to simple kidnapping charges, but said they were innocent of a more serious charge, kidnapping with bodily harm, a crime that carries a maximum sentence of life in prison with no chance of parole. At the trial in Oakland, co-prosecutor Richard Haugner describing in vivid detail the cramped and stifling buried truck. No greater torture could have been inflicted on these victims, he told the judge. One of the defense attorneys, Ted Merrill, saying, mere confinement itself has not been held to be substantial bodily injury. Harm must be gratuitously added to abuse and terrorize the victims. Yesterday, after 16 days of testimony, Judge Leo Deegan found the defendants guilty, the judge declaring that fainting spells and stomach disorders suffered by three of the kidnapped girls did amount to bodily harm. Judge Deegan, this was an ordeal of terror, and that to me causes suffering. Suffering is in itself physical harm. The defendant sat impassively at the defense table. Afterward, attorneys spoke to reporters. Well, what, what made bodily harm, according to the judge, was he said that the fainting and the nose 
bleeds and the stomach distress and stomach aches of three of the children were evidence of the tremendous amount of suffering they underwent. I'm convinced that it is a reversible opinion. Why? Because of the manner in which he found the supposedly reign of terror on three and not on the other two. The defendants face long prison terms in any case since they did plead guilty to the simple kidnapping charge. But now that they have been found guilty of kidnapping with bodily harm, they are to remain in prison for the rest of their lives unless the judge at a hearing next month decides that there were mitigating circumstances or unless a higher court overturns the guilty ruling. Bernard Goldberg, CBS a News, of a Los century Angeles. Since a sensational story put three men behind bars in a small California farming town on the map. The town, Chowchilla, California. And even 25 years later, the Chowchilla school bus kidnapping incident leaves us baffled and amazed. For the children involved, the consequences have proved to be far worse. For them, it was a case of innocence lost. And as John Blackstone has found, time hasn't completely healed their scars. This time, we have issued an APB naming and requesting the pickup of three suspects. It was a bizarre and horrifying crime in California farm country, but the young survivors went on to make an important gift to the children of today. They became little heroes of medicine. What happened to the children of Chowchilla has guided the treatment of young victims of trauma from Oklahoma City to Columbine High School. Psychiatrist Lenore Tear was one of the first to learn from Chowchilla. It seems to me that this is kind of a watershed event. One of the reasons it was it's stuck in people's minds so much is that until then you really thought of schools as a safe place. Before that things were happening to children but once you could see it across a group you could see the nightmares and you could see the the, the terrible fears and you could see the personality changes. 25 years ago the ordeal began with a mystery. Good evening. There may never have been as anguishing a mystery. 26 school children and their bus driver have vanished in California's San Joaquin Valley. 19 girls, seven boys, and their driver taken at gunpoint by three kidnappers who planned to ransom them for $5 million. Why? Why Chachilla? Because it's being so small. And, I mean, nobody here has money to pay. The kids aren't that important. <laughs> Kids aged 5 to 14 taken from their school bus to a van buried underground. A hiding place that could easily have become a tomb for the children and their driver, Ed Ray. Ray is now 80. That's the worst part. We were buried alive. So we was all down in there and they pulled the ladder up and threw us a roll of toilet paper and that's the last we heard of them. Over the next hours, Ed Ray and these tough farm kids dug their way out and escaped. Good evening. Chowchilla, California, a small farming community southeast of San Francisco, tonight has its 26 missing school children and hero bus driver back. Back then, it seemed the perfect happy ending. All the children returned home, apparently without a scratch. Oh, I've never been a movie star before. Nine-year-old Jennifer Brown even seemed as concerned about the kidnappers as herself. Why do you suppose that they would do something like that? I don't know. They didn't have enough love. There wasn't all that much known about childhood trauma. In 1976, most people thought healthy kids would just get over it. Crisis counselors and psychologists did not rush to Chowchilla. The kids were left largely on their own. Until months later, when Dr. Lenore Ter came to see how they were doing, she found psychological say, wounds that had not been treated. Away. Everybody hoped that the problems would go away, and hope doesn't always make it so. The school bus itself has been preserved. It's now sitting in this warehouse surrounded by old tractors and other relics of this agricultural area. Though this may now be a museum piece, the memories of what happened 25 years ago remain fresh and painful for those who were on board. You know, that's the first memory I have of my childhood. But the memories are nasty. The memories hurt. Larry Park is 31 now and still can't escape the emotions unleashed when he was six. Every year at this time, I just get kind of weird. The way that I rage and the way that I... I am just, I am hot-headed. Just to things, but I, I still have not gotten over it. As a kid, um, I was scared of the dark, I was scared of strangers. Um, even now, I still sleep with the nightlight.